Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Honduran white bad people need to make new tents on a regular basis. As a matter of fact, they prepare multiple dwellings around the forest that they can visit. When the sun starts to rise and they are ready to roost for the day, a bunch of them will enter a tent and cling to its roof. There they are concealed and protected from rain and danger. Please continue watching and learn about some adorable tropical beings who eat only fruit. Want to avoid hellfire? Yes? Choose vegan. Ida Viña, that means how are you in Garifuna, an Arawakan language spoken in Honduras. Lovely viewers, your actions that benefit others make heaven smile. My name is Nuriel, and I am a vegan maiden from the Honduran White Bat Kingdom. The adorable animal folk and friendly people of Honduras wish for your days to be filled with happiness and peace in God's love. Welcome to our show titled Honduran White Bat People, the Tiny Tent Makers. We are a fascinating species that contradicts almost everything you may have known about bat people. Unlike so many of our cousins, we are not brown or black, and we do not live in dark caves. We are white and hide under the leaves of heliconia plants to roost in the daytime. Also, we are very picky eaters. When we come out at night to forage, we are preoccupied with finding only one kind of fruit, namely figs. The credit for discovering us goes to Dr. Charles Hoskins Townsend, an American zoologist who visited Honduras in 1887. Scientists found that we were both a new genus and species, Ectophila alba. Ectophila refers to the fleshy leaf-shaped structure on our nose, and alba comes from albus, which is Latin for white. We are definitely petite, a little more than 4 centimeters from front to back, and we don't have a tail. On average, our wingspan is just over 10 centimeters, and we weigh between 5 and 6 grams. In case you don't know, the measurements are small, even for bad people. Those wings of ours are a soft yellow when viewed from above, while the undersides are a grayish black. They are attached, of course, to a body that is covered with white fur. Our head sports a distinctive amber nose leaf, which is complemented by large matching ears. The yellow-orange color is of particular interest to scientists who have discovered it comes from a carotenoid called lutein. This fact is important because Honduran white bat people are the first mammals to display such a pigment in their skin. We will discuss carotenoids in the second half of the show. Honduran white bat people are known for transforming heliconia leaves into stationary tents. The flowering plant is native to Mexico, Central and South America. So, how do we make our roosts? First, we want to find a large leaf somewhat close to the ground. Ideally, it will be new growth and about a meter long. That sounds big, doesn't it? Well, we're in a tropical rainforest with a dense canopy, and plants growing near the forest floor are typically huge to catch as much sunlight as possible. Also, we prefer to use a blade that extends horizontally 
in most cases, the selection will be a group decision because making a tent is not a solo project. It requires a team effort, and we want it to last as long as possible. Construction begins with our snouts pressing on the underside of the leaf. Near the midrib, we bite and puncture it with our canine teeth. Next, we extend the cut on both sides of the central vein. Finally, we use our claws to expand the holes we poke, which causes the leaf to collapse into a tent. It sounds simple, but the process can take several weeks. And after we have modified a leaf to suit our needs, it slowly dies over about two months. So, we need to make new tents on a regular basis. As a matter of fact, we prepare multiple dwellings around the forest that we can visit. When the sun starts to rise and we are ready to roost for the day, a bunch of us will enter a tent and cling to its roof. There we are concealed and protected from rain and danger. After sunset, we leave our shelter to look for nourishment. We are not very adventurous folk and tend to forage on thick trees close to our tent. If we're lucky, we'll find a very productive one with enough fruits to keep us busy all night. If we need to search further away, we depend on echolocation to navigate in the dark. Although figs are our favorite food, we can't always get what we want and sometimes feed on other kinds of fruit. Back in the roost, the warmer summer months are the time for romance. Each female gives birth to a single bat baby, and all the mamas in the colony deliver their offspring within the same week. The dads move out, and the roost turns into a communal nursery where all the young ones are cared for by lactating moms. If a mother goes out to forage, she returns home periodically to give milk. But in less than a month, the newborns are weaned and ready to start flying. Our natural habitat includes areas of eastern Honduras, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, and western Panama that border the Caribbean Sea. Although we are comfortable living at sea level, our species is distributed as high as 700 meters. We prefer being in moist tropical rainforests and on riverbanks with plenty of heliconia and other large-leaved plants. It is ideal if the climate includes rainy summers as this works best for our unique lifestyle. As mentioned earlier, scientists are keenly interested in understanding how Honduran white bat people metabolize lutein for their skin. To better understand the significance of this, let's make a detour and briefly explore the subject of carotenoids. These are a class of plant chemicals that can often be recognized by their yellow, orange, or red color. There are over 600 of them, and they are divided into two main groups, carotenes and xanthophylls. Similar to antioxidants, carotenoids help prevent cellular damage by deactivating free radicals, but they cannot be synthesized. People from both the human and animal kingdoms can only get carotenoids from eating certain fruits, vegetables, algae, and bacteria. Although, coloration related to the presence of carotenoids can be seen in some bird, fish, amphibian, and reptile people, there was no evidence of these pigments being displayed by a mammal until Dr. Townsend uncovered one of my ancestors. But the carotenoid responsible for our colorful nose leaf and ears was not identified until 2016. A team of researchers led by Dr. Ismael Galvan at the National Museum of Natural Sciences in Spain found a terrified lutein in our skin. Where did it come from? 
in their report published by the National Academy of Sciences in the United States. The scientists explained that the xanthophyll carotenoid lutein is available in its free form from the figs we eat. The presence of a chemically modified lutein ester in our flesh suggests that we have a way to convert free lutein into an esterified form that is more stable and bioavailable. This discovery was both surprising and exciting for the research team. Why? Because in humans, only free lutein is present. It is associated primarily with eye health. It helps prevent age-related macular degeneration and reduces the risk of the lens becoming progressively opaque. Also, when sufficient lutein is in the blood, it can prevent cholesterol from building up and clogging arteries. As we reside mainly under heliconia leaves, any human activity that causes rainforests to shrink is a serious threat to our survival. In 2015, the International Union for Conservation of Nature rated our species as near-threatened Assessors were unable to determine our total population, but if our habitat is being converted to farmland and more people need housing, it follows that our numbers are decreasing. Every so often, I wonder if humans have lost the ability to comprehend the danger posed to many species like my own. I hope you will recognize our intrinsic value as part of creation. So, please do what you can to protect our habitat, and that includes praying. May all of humanity soon become vegan and establish a paradise on Earth. We don't have the teeth, the claws, the digestive system to deal with meat. Victoria Moran, vegan. Cheerful viewers, thank you for being with us today. Next is Vegan and Peace Over Us Paradise. Meat Eating and War Destroy Everything, Part 8 of 9, on Between Master and Disciples. May a blissful spirit and grateful heart be your gifts from the Divine. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash aw. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule et suprememastertv.com bar oblique aw. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule y suprememastertv.com barra inclinada aw. साडे प्रोग्राम पेश करते हैं अनेक भाषावा कृपा देखो suprememastertv.com/schedule ate suprememastertv.com/aw